Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. You may have seen in the last few days some news about a paper showing that taurine was able to extend lifespan in mice by up to 25%. Today, we'll have a look at the study and the results that they saw. Here is the paper. Taurine deficiency as a driver of aging. It has a total of 46 authors from a range of organizations. Before we go into details, some key points from the paper. Taurine levels go down with age. In the serum of mice and humans, this can be up to 80% from the youthful level. Supplementing with taurine did increase the lifespan of mice when it was started at 40 months, around 40 for a human. It increased the remaining lifespan by 18 to 25%, or a total of 10 to 12%. Lifespan of C. elegans was also increased, although it did not have the same impact on yeast. The authors also looked at health span through a number of metrics and saw improvement in bone, muscle, brain, gut, and immune health, while lowering of fat levels and increasing energy. Taurine impacted many of the hallmarks of aging, lowering senescence, reducing telomere shortening, and improving mitochondrial function were some of the main mechanisms. In an observational study of 11,966 participants, lower taurine levels were shown to be correlated with poor health. However, one of the key pieces of data that is missing is human randomized clinical trials, which would be a great next step. So what is taurine? It is a semi-essential amino acid. So this means that we can synthesize it, but it may not be able to generate enough to meet requirements under certain circumstances. It is one of the most abundant amino acids in eukaryotes, which would include mammals. This is the chemical structure. So the yellow ball is a sulfur, which has three oxygens. There is the two carbon backbone and an amine group. Taurine can be synthesized from cysteine, but it is also available from the diet. If taurine is deficient in early life or the transporter is absent, this leads to an impairment of muscles, eyes, and the central nervous system. Looking at the results from the paper, taurine levels decrease with age. The mice measurements were made in the serum of C57BL wild type mice and decreased from 132.3 at four weeks to 40.2 at 56 weeks, a fall of 69%. Similarly, a 15 year old monkey had a taurine concentration, which was 85% less than a five year old monkey. And humans also see an 80% decrease from a youthful levels up to the age of 60. So the next question is whether restoring the taurine levels would have a positive effect on health span and lifespan. To test this, they fed C57 BL mice of both sexes with 1000 milligrams per kilogram of taurine until the end of their lives. This was administered orally once per day at 10 a.m they did see an increase in serum taurine levels and an extension of lifespan in both males and females. The taurine supplementation was started at 14 months, which is about the equivalent of 40 years for a human. The lifespan extension was 18 to 25% from the 14 month mark, which translates into a total lifespan increase of 10 to 12%. All mice had the same diet and they were free to eat as much as they wanted. Turning to health span, they looked at various factors in female wild type mice. In two groups, one with 500 milligrams per kilogram and one with 1,000 milligrams per kilogram of taurine. In these and the following graphs, a single asterisk donates a p-value of less than 0.05 and a double asterisk a p-value of less than 0.01. Mice gain weight as they age, and this was suppressed in the 1,000 milligram taurine group by about 10% and body fat was reduced in a dose-dependent manner. Other physical markers of health span, such as bone strength and density, were improved, showing a reduction in osteoporosis. Neuromuscular coordination was tested on the rotor rod test, and this showed an improvement with the Turing group. And grip strength showed an increase in a dose-dependent manner. And finally, in terms of cognition, anxiety was reduced and memory improved. Moving to metabolism, they performed a glucose tolerance test on the mice, and both taurine groups saw a significant improvement in glucose homeostasis, as shown by the reduced area under the curve after an injection of glucose. The white blood cell count was lowered by taurine, 
The implication of this, I am not clear, but in the paper, the authors point to it showing a reduction in age-related inflammation. The paper also goes into a series of tests that they ran to investigate the cellular mechanisms that Turing was using to bring about the physiological changes. They were quite detailed, and I will not go into them here. But in short, it impacted a number of pathways, including reducing cellular senescence, both through protecting DNA and improved mitochondrial function, reduction in inflammation and telomere attrition, and promotion of autophagy, as well as other pathways. For humans, the authors performed an observational analysis using the EPIC Norfolk study from the UK with 11,966 subjects. They looked at the correlation between the levels of taurine and its main metabolites, hypotaurine and n acetylturine and various markers of disease. The way to read this chart is that the blue colored squares show where high levels of the metabolite are inversely correlated with the marker and red colored squares are positively correlated with the marker. So here, the purple and blue squares show that high levels of taurine and hypotaurine are inversely associated with obesity and a high BMI. This is also true for glucose and CRP levels. Cholesterol markers were positively associated with taurine, but negatively associated with hypotaurine. The authors do not speculate on the meaning of this. It is, of course, worth noting that this is only correlation, not causation, but it is consistent with the lower taurine contributing to human aging. Exercise was also shown to increase taurine levels. For trained athletes, this was 1.16 fold increase in a graded cycle test, though the increase was not significant for sedentary individuals. The metabolite hypotaurine increased in all su subjects and n taurine in endurance athletes and sprinters. The authors posit that this may be one of the reasons for the benefits of exercise. As mentioned at the beginning, there are not many clinical trials for taurine supplementation. One was this one from Brazil, looking at the taurine as an antioxidant in women aged between 55 and 70. It was a double blind study with 24 participants and the dose was 1.5 grams per day for 16 weeks. It did seem to have some efficacy, though the placebo group also saw an increase in SOD. An observational study from Japan proposed that, among other dietary factors, taurine intake may be part of the reason for the extended Japanese lifespan. So where can we get taurine from food? It's mostly available in animal products with very little in plants. Seafood, particularly shellfish, have highest concentrations, a key point in the Japanese study. And what about dosage? The amount used in the mouse studies was either 500 or 1000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Using the normal allosteric conversion factor of 12.3, this would be 40 or 80 milligrams per kilogram for a human, or between three and six grams for a 75 kilogram person. This is also the dose that Dr. Vijay Yadav one of the leaders of the study mentioned in an article in Nature. So what about safety? Turin has been known for a long time and is an ingredient in energy drinks. This is from the European Food Safety Authority, who were looking at two common ingredients in energy drinks, one of which was Turin, where, where they said it was safe up to 1,000 milligrams per kilogram in humans, which for a 75 kilogram person would be 7.5 grams. So in conclusion, this looks very interesting. It's great to see that taurine has a positive effect on mouse lifespan and that it was correlated with improved biomarkers in humans. The dose used are large, but within a safety range for humans. Reproduction of the results is key and it would be great to see the ITP try taurine out. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you found this video helpful. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.